How does the 2015 Hero 4 Black compare against the brand new Hero 7 Black? Is it worth upgrading if you already have one of the original 4K action cameras? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. What a great time for action, and a great set of cameras to be comparing. These two exist in almost separate universes. Back in 2015, stabilization wasn't really a thing unless you had a very expensive gimbal, and waterproof without a case, pfft, what is this, the future with space cars and laser beams? <laughs> but what 2015 did have going for it was some awesome video quality and an even better audio recording in their action cameras. So maybe the ancients can teach us something about camera design to this day. Speak to me, oh ancient civilization. But before we get too far into this video, however, let's cover the basic specs of both cameras to get us all on the same page. And a quick disclaimer here I've kind of left out of the last few videos. I'm not a photographer, nor am I a professional videographer. I make home videos and I make YouTube videos, so those are the specs that we're gonna cover today. The GoPro Hero 4 Black was released in 2015. It can record in up to 4K 30 frames per second, 2.7K 60 frames per second, and 1080p in up to 120 frames per second. It comes equipped with an 1100 160 milliamp hour battery capable of recording roughly one hour of footage for each charge. Now, if you do happen to want to take stills with this, it does have the ability to capture up to 12 megapixel images. And it has no stabilization at all. Sad face. The Hero 7 Black, on the other hand, was released in October of 2018, and full disclosure, is probably my favorite action camera ever made. I mean, it is fantastic. You can see plenty of videos about it here. Ding! It can record up to 4K 60 frames per second, 2.7K at 120 frames per second, and 1080p at a staggering 240 frames per second. I love slow motion. Everything looks so cool and smooth. Here, look at the Hero 7 White being dropped from a ladder at 240 frames per second. So awesome. Let's, let's watch that again because I like seeing it get dropped and the slow motion is just so awesome. The Hero 7 has a 1220 milliamp hour battery, roughly capable of the same hour long recording time. Depending on all of the features you have turned on, there's a lot of things that you can have turned on at once here. We'll talk about those in a minute. Unlike the Hero 4 Black, the Hero 7 Black has GoPro's name brand Hypersmooth Stabilization, which we will absolutely be talking about here more in a little bit. Suffice it to say, it is fantastic and earth shattering and mind blowing and all sorts of other statements of awesomeness, just everything. I really like it. <laughs> Physically, the two cameras are separated not only by big technical differences, but design philosophy. The Hero 4 comes from a bygone era where all action cameras came included with a waterproof case, thereby making it something you could always take with you. Whereas the Hero 7 Black comes from a time of, ain't nobody got time to be messing with a case, just just make sure the whole darn thing's waterproof. We'll, we'll figure it out later. Make the whole case, the whole thing is waterproof. But for what they are, both feel great. Though the simplest way to explain this is the Hero 7 basically looks like a Hero 4 that was swallowed by its case. But that case also happened to have a touchscreen on the back. Wow, that was a fancy case. Enough of this. It's time to cover the features of a camera that turns a regular tiny camera that nobody wants into an action camera. And those features are called the pillar. Of action! 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 First up, ease of use. Okay, so these first two pillars really show how far technology has come in the action camera market since 2015. And I make sure to keep this as the first pillar in the action column because ease of use in all cameras is the most important aspect to me. I value quick setup timelines and being able to change settings on the fly over just about darn near anything else a camera can do. So I stick to my guns and I keep this as the most important aspect even though it gets me load of hate on the interwebs. Apparently, most people care about image quality. Again, these are two very different areas in technology. The Hero 4 Black is not very easy to use straight from the body. You have to use a very archaic set of button presses to get through to change any of the settings, and it's just not an intuitive experience, and I really don't like it. It's way more likely that I'll connect it to the GoPro app and change the settings that way, but then I'm recording on my cell phone in an easily accessible place, which isn't always the case, so this definitely kind of fails the first column. The Hero 7 Black, on the other hand, has my favorite method of changing settings, and that is the rear touchscreen interface. This isn't my favorite version of the GoPro user interface, but it is very easy to see what you're recording, it is very easy to change the settings on the fly, and that's just something that I really enjoy. Since the GoPro Hero 5 Black, GoPro has really dialed in their user interface. It's just 
It's, it's my favorite one on the market, bar none. Pillar number two, durability. And again, this is a pretty drastic shift in the direction of the construction in the two disparate generations of cameras. The Hero 4 Black is a very well-built action camera, but it does not have the same standard of construction or durability of the Hero 7. By itself, the GoPro Hero 7 is waterproof down to 33 meters, and it has a chassis that can take a serious hit. For proof, check out my durability test of the GoPro Hero 7 White. It'll be up here, be up on one of those. The Hero 7 Black, though, has a replaceable lens cover, so when you are using it in a gimbal and something flies up and cracks the lens, you can easily replace it without having to get rid of the whole camera, which is one of the best parts about this system that GoPros come up with. The Hero 4 Black is missing most of these features, however, it does come with a waterproof case that will give you some additional toughness. You will lose a majority of your audio recording capabilities when it's in the case, which really stinks because the audio is one of the biggest selling points of the Hero 4 in 2018. So it's pretty disappointing, but it's understandable for a camera released in this era. Next up is compatibility with GoPro style mounts and accessories. Well, they are roughly the same shape and both will work perfectly well with accessories that require the camera to be shaped like a GoPro because Hero 4, GoPro. They're both GoPros, surprise! However, the big differences between the two is that the GoPro Hero 4 Black has a little more versatility when it comes to things like audio adapters. We mentioned this in the Monday video, but the GoPro Hero 7 Black requires the GoPro audio adapter, which is a huge brick if you want to be able to have an audio inject. Whereas the Hero 4 Black only requires a cheap little cable to do the same thing. Pretty darn good little advantage if you are looking at this to be more of a vlogging type camera and less of an action type camera. Next up is one that honestly evens the playing field field between the two cameras in my opinion, and that's image quality. Both cameras have fantastic image quality, really, they both do, which makes it more striking in my opinion that the three year old Hero 4 is able to hold its own against the brand new camera with all of GoPro's proprietary tech inside of it. Now I mean, it's not perfect, but let's head outside real quick and do a vlogging test to see which is the better all around camera. Whoa, double jump. <laughs> Okay, so this is the video slash audio test of the GoPro Hero 7 Black versus the GoPro Hero 4 Black. Now, something you'll notice is that the GoPro Hero 4 Black is in a gimbal and the GoPro Hero 7 Black, I'm just hand holding because the GoPro Hero 7 Black has fantastic electronic image stabilization. It might be the best electronic image stabilization ever made. I mean, in all intents and purposes, the only reason I keep this gimbal is to do stuff where I use action cameras that are not stabilized. Like that's the whole reason why I keep it. Like the electronic image stabilization on the GoPro Hero 7, so good. And here you'll also be able to tell the difference between the audio. So this is the audio coming out of the GoPro Hero 4 Black. Audio test one, two, three. Audio test one, two, three. And this is the audio coming out of the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Audio test one, two, three. Audio test one, two, three. In all fairness, these two cameras are some of my favorite cameras like on the market today. Like I have never, the GoPro Hero 4 was a dream of mine that I wanted to use forever. I have one on hand right now, which is so great. The Hero 7 Black though was one of my favorite action cameras ever made. I mean, I think it might be the best action camera ever made, which is frustrating considering the rest of the line is straight garbage, but they're both really awesome cameras. There's also some wind out today, so you will be able to hear how the two cameras handle wind a little differently. But yeah, two fantastic, whew, fantastic cameras. They're both set to 4K 30 frames per second. They're both set to wide. The Hero 4 Black can only do 4K 30, whereas the Hero 7 Black can do 4K 60 and electronically stabilize it at the same time, which is next level good. Okay, let's do a running test. Running! Action, action, action. We're gonna say action all the time, right? Action, 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 action. <laughs> okay, back to the video. <laughs> and we're back. Seriously, the audio in the Hero 4 is striking. I know I keep mentioning this, but I cannot get over how good it is. That might be a reason by itself to pick one of these up. When you see how much money video people spend to get good audio, having an action camera produce these results is fantastic. Last and most sadly, stabilization. This is where the Hero 7 Black does pull way ahead. Like we mentioned during the specs part of the introduction, the Hero 7 Black has GoPro's hyper smooth stabilization built in, and while yes, a fully balanced gimbal will do better, it won't do better enough to justify the weight or the extra hassle of bringing a gimbal. It's the Hero 7 Black has changed how I get shots in the future. For example, on the Monday video, I was easily able to show that the Hero 4 Black was in a gimbal. If I was gonna get that shot prior to having the Hero 7, the way that I would have personally done it is, I would have used my cell phone in a gimbal, but instead I just turned on the Hero 7 Black, 
recorded it, and I was done in like five seconds. That is the power of hyper smooth stabilization. It, it just, it changes how you use these cameras. And the Hero 7 Black crushes the Hero 4 here. In my opinion, the Hero 4 would always have to live in a gimbal, which, you know, like I said, I don't like bringing extra gear along, so that's a severe hindrance for me if I wanted to use the Hero 4. So what, right? So if you already have a Hero 4, is it worth getting the Hero 7? And if you have a Hero 7, should you add a Hero 4 to the stable? So let's answer the first question first. Matt. I do think there is enough of an upgrade that if you have the funds available, I would recommend the Hero 7 over the Hero 4. But if you don't have the funds available and you already have a Hero 4, I'd stick with it. This is an amazing camera. I see no need to upgrade from this unless you need electronic image stabilization and good electronic image stabilization at that. This, I still think, is one of the best action cameras out there, period. This just happens to be better than it. On the other hand, if you already have a Hero 7, should you also get a Hero 4? If you want a second camera and can find an awesome deal, then sure. Bottom line is the Hero 4 is still an awesome action camera. Not even an action camera, but it's just an awesome all-around camera to this day that I think is worth a purchase if you are in the market for a small, portable, awesome camera.